I know you were, you, you already mentioned that you're from Kikuyu, and I think uh, Richard kind of gave me a little background on one of the podcasts. Mm -hmm. I know whenever this one comes out, but it was, it's probably going to come out before ours. Um, it was talked about Kikuyu culture. You guys are very determined, business oriented, um, never give up. And yeah. You also say you guys are the best tribe in Kenya. Do you agree with that? The best? No, yeah. I wouldn't number say that. Number one in yeah. what? <laughs> you know that, that's he, i don't think i really love diversity if there's right. if there's actually something that me traveling has has shown me is mm -hmm. just the beauty of diversity meeting different tribes different ethnics different i love that and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with celebrating your culture or your tribe there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with saying i love being yoruba because we dress good celebrate it but I think where the balance is, is when you start to think that your tribe is better than the other. You don't think you're number one? No, I, I don't look at life like that anymore. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't, it's not, if you were to ask me, we are better in business, you know, like okay. in what, it All depends right. on in better in what. We are better in business stuff. We are, there are other, Kenya has 44 to 48 oh, yeah. tribes. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot, right? Yeah. And each, each it's like a jigsaw fit. Everyone okay. is better at something than right. the other. We're more aggressive. Sometimes the Kikui's aggressiveness leads the country into violence. Sometimes you see. So you in oh, best, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a double-edged sword. It goes yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Okay. Yeah. So for someone like me that I've never been to like your hometown, so what is the name of your hometown where you grew up at? Are you oh, from yeah. Nairobi? Currently, yes. Yeah, but I like, want. Were you born in Nairobi, though? Well, um, here's here's the short of the long. I was born in Nairobi, but growing up, my mom and my dad. You know, I feel like this is this a very common story shared by a lot of African kids born in the eighties and nineties. Right. We, we kind of have a thread of a storyline where. That was a very defining moment for Africa, not just Ke like Africa as a whole. In the 80s and 90s, probably that's when the first generation, you know, after liberation from colonization, right. there were like unique challenges. Those are the times when Africa was hit by uh, pandemics like HIV and AIDS, right. which rendered so many families broken. That was like a very defining moment for Africa, politically, economically, socially. Families were broken, countries went to war, affecting, you know. So in all that circus, I remember my grandma, uh, my, grand, uh, my grandmother is the one who took care of me like from three years old. And that's because my mom and my dad split. Hmm. When we're, we're a big family. We are seven children. I'm hmm. the sixth. You're the sixth? I'm the sixth boy. Wow. You know that middle childhood, nobody really you know, cares too much about, but you have to like, hey guys, I'm here. Around I'm six, kidding. people kind of forget about you. <laughs> yeah, especially, you see, I'm not the second, I'm like near the last born, yeah. but you're not the last you're born. You're the last born, yeah. you, You're hanging in there somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah, this one. And I never even got to enjoy the last born position because I just, between me and our last born sister, it's just a one year one calendar wow, year so pro I, I probably not even like breastfeed enough wow. before my sister was born, born or conceived rather right. i think so but yeah so i grew up in i was born in nairobi but i d i do not have any nairobi childhood memories because i relocated to a, a city it's not yet a city in the standards of it's i don't know how kind of? like kenya that you know we have cities and towns okay so eldoret is still a town what's the name of it eldoret 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 yeah so what is it like eldoret is mainly a farm town oh it's actually the town where it's the home of champions like if you enter eldoret they say welcome to the home of champions every global star athlete that you know is from eldoret Really? Yeah, all the runners come. Did they train from there? Did they train there? Is it like so? Is it like on a hillside? Is it flat land? Is it? It's is a valley. Mountain? Yeah, yeah. Valley. It's the yeah. It's like the northern. No, it's it's not that. It's not that. It's like the Rift Valley. It's in. It's a Rift Valley. So it's in between the mountains. Yeah. Does it it's rain a lot there, or does it have a normal? It, it rains a lot. It has extremes. When it's hot, it's really hot. When it's cold, it's really cold. But if between raining and sun. 
it rains more. So it's a very cold town. Out there, right? Eldoret, yeah. Eldoret. Okay, you can call it LD. Everyone knows okay. it's LD. LD to Nairobi. Is it like a construct of like Spokane to Seattle? Or is it like construct of like, um, let's say like a smaller town like Pullman to Seattle? No, it will be Spokane. Oh, okay. Pullman is a, a bit smaller. smaller. Yeah, okay. it will be. Because it has, really, it has everything. It's only that it's more of a farm town. People in Eldoret don't live in the city more they live in the farms and they have huge farms because okay. even so for, for kenya for instance staple food in kenya is maize corn if you want to call it yeah. corn here i think it's maize i agree too right? i know what they call it corn. i know it's maize <laughs> i know corn and corn is different right yeah, it's, maize. Corn is different, yeah. it's maize so elder is one of the biggest contributors of maize farming in kenya right so you can imagine and wheat wheat is also a big deal and so Eldoret has a lot of maize farming and we, and that's like large scale farming. So I also grew up in a farm. It wasn't like super big, but it was big. And being Akikuyu, Eldoret is pretty much not where I'm from because I don't even come from the runners tribal ethnic group. Right. I don't. So I was like an outlier in a different city. You know, like <laughs> you're not running. <laughs> I'm just an there. outlier. I'm there. I'm not running. Yeah, but it's because oh, I did not mention this, but. In my in my family, in my paternal side, my, my dad's dad has some Maasai in him. Mm. That's how he ended up because Eldoret is actually a Maasai name, just means I think a flat land or something. That's a lot of Kenyan towns have names been named by Maasai. It's one of the indigenous communities of Kenya. And most towns or cities, even Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, Nairobi, that's a Maasai. It means like a place with many like ponds of water or something. Yeah. And for someone that doesn't know, I'm, I'm still learning about a little bit about Maasai. They are the oldest, one of the oldest, like still in the tribal culture. Yeah, the world, right? yeah, they're still an indigenous community. They're still one of those that have resisted civilization since they just do their own thing, their own way. I and can't wait to talk to someone that's actually from me because I have so many questions. There's some, for Maasai? There's some like, there's just so many like, uh, um, hearsay that I've heard and uh -huh. I don't, I've not confirmed from someone that's from it. Yeah. To actually know if it's true. Uh -huh. Like I've heard some stuff like you have to kind of fight like maybe like a wild animal for it to be a man. Uh, oh yeah, they have crazy and very interesting right? yeah, passage of rights. Like, you know, like in Africa, probably you do that in Nigeria, where boys are not circumcised until a certain age yeah. because it's a passage of right, right from boyhood to manhood. Right. Like in the Kikuyu community, they have to be at least thirteen or fourteen. Okay. Like Right when you are going from your primary to to high school to secondary education, that transition. So that's when the boys get circumcised, hmm. like to just be told now you've become a man and right. you're going to secondary school. So man up, you know. So the masters have that too, but for them they don't do it like in any modern way. They they have to their passage of rights are crazy. You, you have, have to, to be lion? Yeah, you you <laughs> hunt, you kill something because you know you know masses um nomads. They're still nomad nomads to date. So they move around a lot with their animals. They have Oh, okay. They go, they just graze with their animals. They yeah, just, so even the the tests that you have to undergo are tests that confirm that when you're out there in the wild you can protect you yourself. Can protect yourself. Oh, interesting. You get yeah, that's why. So you can you So you you're not killing an a lion for the sake. No, it's you're because proven. You, because they move with thousands of cattle at a go, depending on this on the season. Oh. And if you're out there in the wild and you have cattle, and that's their main uh, business, right. the cattle keeping is like their economic uh, infrastructure source of of life, yeah, yeah, of livelihood. So they have to protect themselves, the animals go through the harshest conditions and all that at night, stay watch and all. That. So you, they are trained to kill lions and no, they can even tell, they can sniff them from far. So if you come to Kenya and you're going for a safari, I heard you I are in the wait. safest hands if you have like a Maasai Sorry. warrior, because those guys have learned to even tell when a snake is approaching, like they, they, yeah, they are in sync. They're oh in sync God. with, yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah, very I've heard so many. Like I said, stories, but I can't wait. I want to really do that. Come, I want to really come to Kenya. Yeah, I make can't sure wait. I'm there. Make sure I'm there. <laughs> I have to. I have to. <laughs>